Good morning. Welcome to day four of the trip. Um, you can just see Helmsley behind me. It's about seven, eight o'clock here. We are going to head to Revo Abbey in a couple hours. Um, great dog friendly place. Looks really interesting. So we'll check it out, take you along, and maybe it's somewhere you want to visit while you're here. So I'm standing here at Revo Abbey. Um, you know, it's, it's looking really pretty back there. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that with everything going on um, in the world right now, uh, as everything is pre-booked only, so we're not going to be able to go check out the Abbey from the inside, so we're going to go try and find something else to do. Um, this is the biggest problem with trying to wing a road trip and not making too many plans, is things can be closed and you've got to go for a plan B, plan C, plan D, plan M, N, O, etc. So we'll go and see if we can find something else to do today. So we just stopped here on the way to um, the Abbey. Um, so we're actually on the Sponton Estate, which is a privately owned area of Moorland. Um, but as you can see behind me, absolutely stunning. Um, the North Yorkshire Moors, at least according to the sign here, is the largest open heather moorland in the UK. And one can see why, it's, it's untouched, it's beautiful, and it's wild and beautiful. Go get water! Go get water! Oh, let's see if we can get down there with the dogs. Go get water! Let's go! Okay, so I got down here and now I've got to figure out how to get back up again. This is interesting. Ah, see, just like that little slip. We're all right, we're good. And this right here pisses me off probably more than anything. Um, either pack out your poop, bury it, don't leave it sitting in bags in the middle of the moorland where it's just never gonna biodegrade. Even the National Trust says they'd rather you took a stick, flicked it into the bushes than leave it like that. All right, we are on the top of Chimney Bank, and what you see behind me right here is apparently the chimney for uh, a secret bunker, a secret nuclear bunker that was below our level here. So Chimney Bank, it's just before Rosedale Abbey, um, and it's actually uh, the, the, the descent down into Rosedale Abbey shares the title of the steepest road in England, um, along with, no, let me think, it was the one that we went through in the Cumbria and the Lake District. Um, I'll put it down below because I've totally forgotten what it was. We're also going to go out to see the Anna Moss Round Barrow or Anna Cross Round Barrow and uh, Wayside Cross um, out here. So we'll check that out. It's only a short walk out here and we'll go check it out. This is one brave sheep right here. Ooh, stand off. Got attitude. All right, so we're standing at the base of the Atta Cross Round Barrow here. Uh, it's, I think it's about 18 meters across, 1.2 meters high, and is predominantly earthenwork and stones. Um, the visible stones are only about four meters um, along the barrow, um, and you can't really see them, much of them anymore. They're all now covered. Uh, it's topped here. It's a wayside cross. Um, it's a, med a modern replica of a medieval wayside cross. Uh, there are 350 of these wayside crosses throughout the UK, dotted around on the Yorkshire Moors, Devon, Cornwall, on Dartmoor and Exmoor. Um, and I'm not sure their purpose, I'll see if I can find out and put it down below, but definitely cool. It stands out quite predominantly on this natural rise uh, on the North Yorkshire Moors. Um, we're currently about a kilometre from where we parked at the Chimney Bank, um, and it's a very, very easy walk for anybody who's interested in coming to see this. All 
away, back of the car, what's next on the list? So randomly, just saw this off the side of the road, I have no idea what it is, but it was easy to pull into, we're gonna go check it out, it's quite interesting. So this area, Bank Top, which is what this area is called, was completely changed in 1856 by the Rosedale Victorian Iron Rush. Um, iron ore extracted from the Holland's mines was processed in this area. Uh, and what we're walking up on, I believe, are the kilns here. Um, uh, the leftover uh, brickwork from the kilns. So we're gonna have a look at this side and see what this one says. So these being the kilns, the way this worked is that workers would dump the iron stone in at the top. It was then mixed with coal underneath where all the impurities were burned off in a process called calcinating. It was then shipped on the uh, Roseberry or Rosedale Railway to 12 miles away to um, a processing facility where it would be smelted at that point. Um, and what they did here was it reduced the weight basically to get all the impurities so it was then less to ship to the actual smelting facilities. Now I could be completely wrong, but it seems to me that this path is laid along uh, where the old tracks used to be. I'm, I think there are some visible further down, but it seems like it would make the most sense. It's fairly level, flat, and the way it runs parallel to the kilns here. There's also a very unnatural gap in the hill right here with a pond in the back where water gathered. Um, and so that would make the most sense doesn't seem to say on the side exactly where the railway ran but logic dictates that it would have run in this direction and headed down to Rosedale which I believe is just behind us over here. So definitely not a bad find for just off the roadway. It's quite interesting. Glad we saw that. So now, hopefully, down onto the Rosedale, and uh, we'll see what we can find there. Well, apparently Rosedale Abbey actually isn't an abbey; it's a town. Um, so we're going to head to the coast see if we can find the. I think the Bremer Cliffs or Bremerton Cliffs. Uh, it's supposed to be a really good place for seabirds, but I'm ready to head to the coast and then for the rest of the day We're gonna head up the coast towards uh, Ravenscar where we're gonna see if we can go see some seals at that point All right, we are at Flamborough Head um, We went over to Bempton Cliffs, which is the RSPB bird sanctuary but it was full so we come down a couple of miles to check this place out first and hopefully that will be a little emptier after about two o'clock. Man this is already beautiful down here wow really impressed definitely worth stopping at. Most people seem to be staying up top of the cliffs and picnicking up there. Man, it's cool, it's low tide, lots of little nooks and crannies to explore. Unfortunately, um, somebody's playing ball behind us, had to put the dogs on leash. We're gonna go check out this gully over here. Lots of rock pooling opportunities, but man, this is really cool. You can see how you can get cut off from the tide up here. Looks like the high tide line goes all the way in sea stack right there. So we're at the sea stack here, which is really cool. But every time you go around a corner and these, you come across these massive gouges in the cliffside. 
where the sea's come in and just blown it away, which probably started off as blowholes. So we're here down in this bay. It's currently low tide on a calm day. Looking around it, you can just imagine what this place would be like in quite a violent storm and wouldn't want to be stuck here. But I bet it would be quite the sight one to you. Up a little higher, it would be quite fun to come photograph video. Bigger channel. Wow, look at this. Wow, look at this little sea cave. Oh my gosh, I just came around the corner. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Have a look at this behind me. Oh my gosh, that was <laughs> wholly unexpected. Holy surprise, I had no idea this was down here. They don't advertise it, don't they? Freaking epic, oh my gosh. Sea arch and oh my gosh, this looks even well, maybe not better, but ooh, try not to follow. Oh my gosh, how incredible is this? Wow, I can't even get it all on camera. We keep backing up a little bit, but dude, how is this not? I don't know, a pay for sight. We got another one here too. So this is, this one's actually gone all the way through here. You can see a little bit of daylight down there. I'm not gonna go too far in. Just absolutely crazy. even more incredible about this other than how freaking amazing it is I have this place all of myself like there were a few people when I came in but there is nobody here I just can't believe it it's low tide <laughs> I'm so glad it is this was definitely worth stop I don't really want to leave I'm feeling quite quite overwhelmed in here actually Feels like a very natural cathedral, very spiritual place. And of course, that's sort of looking roughly east, which is the way most cathedral naves will point. So that was quite a surprise back there at those cliffs. So we are now back at Bempton Cliffs. 
car park finally cleared out. A little bit quieter here now. So hopefully we get to see some seabirds. It's actually quite inexpensive. It was four pounds fifty to get in here. Went for you know a couple of miles of coastline, go explore. Hopefully we see some some cool birds. Now it's end of nesting season, so it's not going to be the puffins and the gillypots, or there may be, but not not the, not as many. Uh, I think we're most likely to see out here is gannets. Apparently there's about 3,000 of them on the cliffs at this point. So yeah, let's see what we can see. That was quite cool. I realize the cliffs aren't that busy right now, but they're really quite noisy. Um, I believe it's a Fulmer's gull that we're looking at through there, but I think there's some gannets too. I have to look at the footage. Um, and of course, I don't have a single pair of binoculars with me, which is a shame. I'm missing out a little bit there. Um, but definitely cool to watch them coming and going, but they're just like perched on these sheer cliffs. Um, yeah, quite cool. So while it's really cool that we get to come see this, even on a quiet season, definitely better to come in spring. It's really sad to see um, that of our, all our seabird species, 50% of them are, are in decline, if not more. And this all comes down a lot to global climate change. Um, as the warm water, or as the water warms, um, we get warm water plankton, which isn't nearly as prevalent as cold water plankton. And on that is what the sand eels, um, feed, which is the predominant food source for a lot of these birds, the puffins, the gannets, the auks. Um, and so as that changes, it gets harder and harder for them all to find food to feed their young and numbers start to decline. Um, so yeah, I really attribute it to global climate change, uh, which is definitely something we all need to pay attention to and do something about. But seeing these birds is definitely kind of a cool experience. Final stop on um, the five overlooks, and just down here we've got a youngster right below us, uh, which is quite cool. So they uh, take some five years to get their full adult plumage, start from dark brown and go to full white with the black wing tips. And you can tell how old they are by looking at their plumage. Um, by year four, they've kind of got a piano key look on their wings, and by year five, when they're full adults, they don't have any dark uh, feathers in their white plumage at all. So I think that brings us to the end of Bempton Cliffs. Uh, I've seen a lot of gannets. I haven't seen a whole lot of owls. Pigeons. Uh, thinking they're gannets or other seabirds, uh, but haven't seen a whole lot else, which is a shame. 
Uh, it would have been kind of cool to see some puffins, some guillemots, uh, auks, and the like. Um, however, the best time to come here is in spring when it's nesting season. Probably a lot, definitely a lot more birds here, a lot more fighting going on, a lot more interesting uh, things to watch going on with the birds. I definitely recommend coming here, whether it's fall, whether it's spring, winter. There's always going to be something different to see. So come check it out. It's quite cheap uh, for what it is, and all the funds that you put into the entry fee go into preserving this natural area. So we are done with Bets and Cliffs. We are heading up to the moors. Uh, not quite sure where yet to see if we can find a campsite. It's been a pretty epic day, uh, I gotta say. Absolutely zero regrets about leaving the Cleveland Way. I, I can't even imagine uh, a day better than today. Uh, while hiking so yeah been a great day so I'll catch you up at camp uh, and thanks for joining me so far it's been pretty epic to have you along all right looks like we found our place for the night um, it took me a while to find the, the road I was looking at just had no pull-off spots at all uh, at a car camp uh, you know pull over places for passing but just nothing well off the road so we drove around for a bit um, and headed back towards Rosedale or inadvertently um, but as you can see not a bad view from from here and unfortunately the clouds came in so we're not going to get much of a sunset uh, we did get a, a little bit of a view back where I started looking thought I found a place but I was like looked like it might be a little crowded um, so we moved on uh, we're gonna get dinner made and uh, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow hopefully we go see some seals and do some rock pooling so thanks for watching